How and for how long have the people of Rotorua commemorated Anzac Day? In papers past, it is revealed that about a thousand people gathered in the government gardens in Rotorua on the 25th of April 1916. The article does not mention a parade, but it was a half-day holiday. At this point, the war was still on. Here we see a photo of the landing at Anzac Cove, Gallipoli, in 1915. As the years unfolded, what was the mood? The First World War ended in 1918, with many men not returning home for many months to come. New Zealand had a population of 1.5 million in 1918 and had just lost 18,000 men and women in the conflict. Every home in New Zealand had been touched by this global conflict and the nation needed a way to remember those who had paid the ultimate sacrifice in this war to end all wars. A meeting was held on the 10th of April 1920 to plan a commemoration with recommendations from the National RSA. The parade included soldiers who'd fought in South Africa in the Boer War. The parade proceeded down Arawa Street, at that time the main street of Rotorua, to the government gardens, where nearly 3,000 people gathered for the memorial service. The car that led the parade was driven by Roger Delamere Danzi, who had been the postmaster at the time of the Tarawera eruption. His three sons, Harry, Roger and George, all served with the Pioneer Māori Battalion. Major Roger Danzi served at Gallipoli and the Western Front. An early morning service had been held in the Māori settlement, led by Reverend Bennett, with nearly 4,000 attending. In late 1920, the Anzac Day Bill had its second reading, with a day to be dedicated to the memory of our soldiers. July 1924 saw the unveiling of the World War I Memorial in the Government Gardens. Although the 1930s began with well-attended memorial services, concerns began to be expressed that some were becoming indifferent to Anzac Day. The pattern became of a parade, dawn parade, followed by an indoor civic service after which the parade would proceed to the Government Gardens for the laying of wreaths at the Cenotaph, and then the playing of the last post. The papers of 1938 reveal the anger veterans felt at political campaigning that occurred that Anzac Day. However, 1939 revealed the biggest service since they began, as the war once again faced a global conflict. The parade in 1942, as shown, was impressive with about 2,000 in the parade alone. In 1944, American Navy and Army personnel who were in Rotorua on leave also took part in the Anzac Day Parade. The photo news contained photos of the Anzac Day commemorations each year. A tradition of Anzac Day was for RSA members to visit any comrades who were in hospital for breakfast. In 1968, the photo news revealed Sister Mary Mabel Cook in the parade. She had been a nurse at Gallipoli. By 1974, there were no longer any Boer War veterans left. On the 23rd of April 1978, a third generation seedling from the Lone Pine of Gallipoli was planted in the RSA section of the Lawn Cemetery. Five veterans of World War I marched this year. Attendance numbers began rising in the 1990s. Mr. Doug Dibley, the last known surviving Anzac, attended his final Anzac service in 1997. This is what Stephen Parker wrote on Anzac Day, 1998. Standing in Ohanemutu, slowly graying darkness, the fact that Anzacs were no more hit home. The true experience of Gallipoli's battlefield was not even a memory, as it had been taken to the soldiers' graves. Struck by a sense of loss, I remembered seeing the unbridled joy on the face of our last Anzac, 
the late Doug Dibley of Rotorua at last year's civic service because of the recognition that was given to the work of the ANZAC. But now, what was ANZAC Day without its namesake? It seemed to be the end of an era, but then breaking over the horizon, the sun revealed clearly the record number of people who had gathered here beside Lake Rotorua. Like the Anzac who landed at dawn on the Turkish beaches 83 years before, they had come in droves. 2005 marked 90 years from the first landing at Gallipoli. There were big write-ups in the local paper, accounts of pilgrimages to Gallipoli in honour of great-great-uncles and grandfathers, revelations of diaries that survived World War I and World War II and poetry grieving those who had died. In 2014, World War 100 was established as a nationwide venture to create events and programs to commemorate 100 years since World War I. In Rotorua, the Field of Remembrance was created in the Government Gardens, with the first service being held on the 23rd of April 2015 to commemorate and mark Rotorua soldiers who died as a result of World War I. In those years marking the following of 100 years since the Anzacs first landed at Gallipoli, the numbers attending dawn services, parades and civic services have steadily grown. The pilgrimages to Gallipoli by descendants of the Anzacs the knowledge gained through books and digital mediums which have poured into people's hands have all helped to keep alive the promise, to honour the dead and inspire the living. Thank you for listening.